Hello everyone, I'm Lala Drona and I'm a painter, a video artist, a universe creator, and um, I was born with a unilateral breast agenesis, also known as a unilateral breast hypoplasia. I'll probably refer to it as unilateral breast agenesis because I think it sounds cooler. So let me explain first, I guess, what a unilateral breast agenesis is. It means that one breast grows and then the other breast does not during puberty. Um, but yeah, so uh, over the past few years, I have been looking online, uh, look, researching about unilateral breast agenesis, um, how common it is, uh, anything. Um, and I tend to find that there aren't very many people talking, speaking out about their experiences. And I think, like, for example, I'll find a lot of medical documents and even on YouTube, I'll find a lot of uh, medical kind of doctors talking about it or things like that, but you don't see the people going through it, talking about it. And this is, I think it's pretty sad because it's something that it is quite isolating when you go through it. And so I wanted to at least talk about my experience and hopefully make some people feel a little bit less alone and yeah, hear somebody who's gone through it. Um, so I'm 34 years old. You know, this during this video I'll talk about my experience, but hopefully in further videos I'll also talk about other things like what clothes I ended up wearing and how I dealt with it. So I'll tell you about my experience, which is um, it's an experience very much surrounded by a secret. So I was so ashamed um, of my body and um, this idea of if you're not perfect, you should, you should hide. Um, I think women feel that way a lot. Um, your arms aren't, you know, skinny, so wear these types of shirts or et cetera, et cetera. Um, and breasts are such a symbol, I think, for women and femininity that, you know, there's a lot, there's just, a, it's very loaded. There's a lot around it. Um, and at about, I think I started noticing the asymmetry maybe around 12 years old, um, but I, you know, went to the doctor by myself because where I'm from in the United States, it was legal to go see anything that had to do with gynecology or anything like that. It was okay to go without a parent. So I was able to keep that secret and um, the doctors, you know, told me at the beginning, don't worry, don't worry, this happens a lot. Um, sometimes one breast grows and the other one catches up later. And so I, I waited, I waited, and you know, 15 years old comes around and the doctors tell me, oh, um, your breast, it's not gonna grow. Um, and you, you just have to accept yourself and love yourself and this is the way you are. And I thought, well, first of all, I kind of, I always knew it was never gonna grow. For some reason I had that intuition in me. And so I, I, I felt very isolated in the way that nobody would believe me or do anything and very alone too in the way that, okay, um, I understand I need to love myself and accept myself, but there were some you know, mechanics of living in a society where uh, we have bras that are made for two breasts, we have uh, clothes that are made for two breasts. Um, we have, you know, even the, the physicality of it, how uncomfortable it could be, playing sports, going swimming, um, the so, especially the social part of it, trying to hide it. And, you know, if there was a moment where, uh, you know, everyone was going swimming or bra shopping or something, I had to find a way to get out of it and kind of twist it in a way that people wouldn't find out. Um, so I think I became very hyper aware of my surroundings as well. And... So yeah, so 15 years old, um, they tell me it's not gonna grow. And so I decide finally that I'm gonna tell my mother. She was very shocked that she didn't know about it, but to be honest, I had become really good at, at hiding it and uh, by wearing the clothes and, and just certain positions and things like that. Um, she felt really bad um, about it, but um, she right away was on my team, wanted to know what I wanted to do. Um, I, I told her that I wanted to go through surgery to augment the, the left side, um, the agenesis side. And so she talked to the doctors. Um, since I was under 18, they needed permission from my parents. The insurance also covered it uh, because it, you know, it's a, I guess it's a, something that happens uh, 
congenitally, so while you're inside your, your mother's womb. Um, and uh, also another thing is some people have a unilateral breast agenesis if they have pollen syndrome. And this is another condition that has a, an array of, of symptoms that go with it. And um, they, they, diagnosed, they, they looked at, they did a bunch of tests on me and they concluded that I don't have pollen syndrome. What I have is just simply a genetic mutation where uh, one breast grew and the other one just never turned on, I guess, or was never, I guess the switch was never activated in a way. This is how a doctor explained it to me. And um, I actually think it's kind of cool now. Um, some people might be embarrassed of a genetic mutation or something, but um, you know, it's not hugely debilitating. So I, I consider myself pretty lucky. Um, and also very lucky to have had a, a family and you know access to insurance and and things like that as well so that was very helpful so I had the the breast surgery and um, there they were still quite different because you know a breast implant is very different than a, a natural breast and my natural breast was a um, C cup so even before the surgery, it was quite different. It was a, a big breast with nothing on the other side. Um, and now um, after the surgery, I, they were just very different. They were laying different on my chest. It was very uncomfortable. It was a little bit difficult to wear clothes. Um, so at 19 years old, I had a, the second surgery, which was to lift the right breast and make them symmetrical so that they could sit um, the same in my my bra. Of course, they would never look the same. The doctors told me that um, But I think after getting this surgery, I would say that it was Kind of like well, it was a prosthetic. So I would say that it It, it was like a band-aid in a way. It helped me grow up socially and um, Let's say as normal as I could um, While having this condition and even psychologically and whatnot. Um, but I think the fact of having a, a something foreign in your body, like a, it, it felt almost like Tupperware or something. And, and it, you know, it's not like a real breast. It doesn't, you know, stay with your body when it moves. It, it moves alone and around as if, you know, because it's not part of your body. And, you know, if someone hit it or something, it could move to the side and it, it just could be painful and, and very strange. So I felt for years that I was almost protecting it um, and it just, I think it, it probably weighed on me psychologically. Um, so 17 years later after the first surgery, 33 years old, I it was time to replace the breast implant. And I just didn't want to go through this cycle of, okay, every 10 years I'm going to have surgery and replace my breast implant and da 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 da. And even seeing the, the, the surgeons, they said, oh, well, you know, we could also remove your, your natural breast and put a breast implant in there too. And then they'll be more similar and you could have two breast implants. And I was thinking like, I didn't even want one breast implant. Um, what am I gonna do? And so, um, and you know, society too is telling you what a woman should look like, what a, what a beautiful woman looks like and a young woman, an attractive woman looks like and um, all of these ideas and also being used to having breasts um, they are they are a very feminine powerful symbol um, and so i figured out like okay well if they're ready to remove my right breast maybe they can take out the the breast implant and they can also remove my natural breast and that way I won't have to have any more silicone in my body um, because even if it's a saline implant like mine was, it's, there's still silicone in it because the bag is silicone. Um, and there's a lot of health hazards with that. Um, I didn't have any symptoms that I knew of, but I know a lot, a lot of women have had a breast implant illness. And I think, I believe, you know, of course I'm not a doctor, but I believe even if I wasn't having symptoms, I'm sure just having a foreign object in your body for so long, it's, you know, probably not great. But um, either way, just the comfortable, like how comfortable it was as well, it just wasn't very fun, uncomfortable. Um, so there go, um, I decided, okay, just take out that breast implant and we'll remove my other breast. And so that's 
I'm in the process of two surgeries right now. Um, I just finished the first one last year, and that was to remove the breast implant. And now I'm going on to have the second surgery at the end of this year. And that will be to finish removing the, the natural breast um, so that they'll be the same size. Um, this means that I'll have, you know, I think, you know, as a woman, no matter what, you kind of have breasts. Um, or even if you don't have breasts, like they're still breasts just because you're a woman, I guess. Um, hmm. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, um, so yeah, they're, they're just gonna be very, very small. And, and yeah, already without having the breast implant, I feel great. I really do feel great. Uh, it feels liberating. I'm, I can run differently. Uh, it's, it's really great. I, would, I think it was the best decision of my life to get that out and just be comfortable, lay on my stomach and, you know, not have, you know, something there all the time. Um, it's just not good for balance and everything. So, so long term, but so yeah, that's my story and hopefully I'll, I'll come back to this soon and talk about different topics around that and share with y'all. So hopefully this reaches some of you out there with the unilateral breast agenesis and you're not alone and it's okay. And one of the best ways that I've dealt with it is through my art. And it has been the biggest catalyst and the biggest driver behind my art for a long time and my beliefs and, you know, even activism. Um, I think it's, it's given me a lot of superpowers, so just, kind of concentrated all of that into that direction. All right, well, hope you all have a great day. Okay, bye.